In this video, we're going to look at how the enthalpy change of a reaction, so delta H, can be determined by a method known as calorimetry. So essentially, the reaction is going to be carried out in an insulated beaker. This is a thermometer. And effectively, we're going to measure the heat that's exchanged with the surroundings. And the surroundings are going to be this known mass of liquid. Once we've done that, we can then convert the energy that's transferred with these surroundings into an enthalpy change, as you will see. So the first example we're going to look at is the reaction between magnesium and copper sulfate solution. It's a displacement reaction and the products are magnesium sulfate solution and copper. So we want to know what the enthalpy change is for this reaction. So the first thing to point out is we're going to use an excess of magnesium and we're going to use 100 centimetres cubed of 2 moles per decimetre cubed solution of copper sulphate. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use this information later on in the calculation, I'm going to calculate how many moles of copper sulphate we are using in this reaction. So moles equals concentration times volume. The concentration is 2 moles per decimeter cubed and the volume remember must be in decimeters cubed. You can't have centimeters cubed with moles per decimeter cubed. So the volume is 0 0.1 of a decimeter cubed and so the number of moles of copper sulfate is 0 0.2. So I've got my reaction vessel here. This is a polystyrene cup. And inside the polystyrene cup, we've got our 100 centimetres cubed of the two moles per decimeter cubed copper sulphate solution. And the first thing I'm going to do is record the temperature of the solution. So I'll just put my thermometer in and give it a little while to stabilize. We'll just read off there. So that's 20 degrees. So the copper sulphate is starting at 20 degrees C. I've added the magnesium. Remember this is in excess. And the temperature is starting to go up. So you can see the thermometer there is slowly starting to rise. And what I'm after is the maximum temperature rise produced by this reaction. So it looks like the thermometer is plateaued now and it's reading 65 degrees C. So I've got the information on the whiteboard now. So we had a starting temperature of 20 degrees C. The maximum temperature at the end was um, 65 degrees C. So that means the temperature has risen by 45 degrees Celsius. So we're going to look at the calculation now um, and essentially the calculations in two steps. So step one is the calculation of energy transferred with the surroundings. So essentially the energy that's been produced by this reaction has heated up the solution and we're going to use the equation Q equals MC delta T. I've labelled the terms in the equation so you can see that the Q term stands for energy now this is going to come out in joules the M stands for the mass of the solution whose temperature is changed so in this example, that's going to be our copper sulphate solution. This needs to be in grams. And to calculate the mass of a certain volume of solution, we would need to know the density of the, the solution. So you would be told the density of the solution and we'll convert that to grams, as you will see. The C term stands for specific heat capacity. Now essentially that is the energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of the solution. So of this solution here, the energy needed to raise one gram of this solution by one degree C. 
and obviously delta T stands for the temperature change. So the density of the solution is one gram per cubic centimetre and the specific heat capacity is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Kelvin. And so feeding those numbers into the MC delta T equation, we get 100 centimetres cubed would be the equivalent of 100 grams because each centimetre cubed has a mass of one gram. So M is 100, C is 4.18, and remember that temperature rise that we recorded with the thermometer was 45 degrees C. And that's giving us an energy transfer of 18,000 810 joules. So essentially this reaction has transferred that many joules into the solution which is in turn heated it up by those 45 degrees C. Once we know the energy that's been transferred we can convert that to an enthalpy change delta H by using this expression. So step two we're going to convert the joules to delta H by the equation minus Q over the moles. So the minus sign is needed because this was an exothermic reaction. So we're going to feed our numbers in. We have uh, those 18,810 joules for Q. And remember at the start of the video I worked out how many moles of copper sulfate we had and remember that was 0 0.2. So if 0 0.2 moles of copper sulfate solution produced this much energy then obviously if we divide by those 0 0.2 moles we're going to find out what one mole would give and that's coming out at 94,050 joules per mole minus sign because it's exothermic. Now delta H is normally expressed in kilojoules per mole and so we divide by a thousand, one, two, three, so that's minus 94.05 kilojoules per mole. The second example I've got, I'm going to look at the reaction between two liquids now, so two aqueous solutions. So we've got sodium hydroxide solution reacting with hydrochloric acid solution. So this is your classic neutralization reaction. And we are told that we have 25 cm cubed of two moles per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide. And that's gonna be reacted with 25 cm cubed of two moles per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid. So the first thing I wanna do is calculate how many moles we've got and then we'll take it from there. So you can see for both solutions we've got exactly the same quantities. We've got 25 cm cubed. Concentration both 2 moles per decimeter cubed. So the moles are going to be exactly the same. So concentration times volume. Remember that volume must be in decimeters cubed. So essentially we're reacting 0.05 moles of sodium hydroxide with 0.05 moles of hydrochloric acid. So I've got my two chemicals in these two vessels here. So I'm gonna record the temperature of the sodium hydroxide first. That's inside the polystyrene cup. And let's just have a look at the, what the thermometer is reading. So that's saying 22.5 degrees C. I'll just do the same with the hydrochloric acid. Just measure that there. And yep, that's exactly the same, 22.5 degrees C. So I'm gonna mix the two chemicals together now and I'm going to watch the thermometer and record the maximum temperature. The thermometer stopped rising now and it's settled at 34.5 degrees C. I'll just write that down. So we've got a temperature rise of 12 degrees Celsius. 
I'm going to feed those numbers into those two steps now and see what we get as an enthalpy change. So remember, step one was calculating the energy using the MC delta T expression and then we'll convert that to kilojoules per mole by dividing the energy by the number of moles that we've used in this reaction. You can see in green there we've got the density of the solution is one gram per cubic centimetre and we've got the same specific heat capacity value of 4.18 joules per gram per degree Kelvin. First thing to note is the mass of the solution when I combined the two solutions together we had a combined mass of 50 grams or combined volume sorry of 50 centimetres cubed so therefore the mass of the solution that was heated up from the density would be 50, 50 grams. So we're multiplying 50 by the specific heat capacity 4.18 by the temperature rise of 12 and that's coming out at 2508 joules and feeding that into the second step so that's delta H equals minus remember exothermic the temperature went up minus Q over the moles so that's minus 2508 divided by 0 0.05 and that's coming out at minus 50,160 joules per mole and in kilojoules per mole that's going to be a thousand times less so that's minus 50.16 kilojoules per mole. 